Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Bahardar University, wisdom at the source of the Blue Nile. We are honored to have you all in this year three Tana annual lecture jointly prepared by the Tana Forum Secretariat and Bahardar University. And this lecture is not far from the discussions which we are going to undertake in terms of defense and security, uh, peace and security, conflicts and whatnot. Because it's exactly this leadership which brought development, a quick development to Rwanda. I couldn't help but be amazed at the miracle of Rwanda rising up from a grim landscape of burial grounds and ruins left behind by the genocide. In the time from my first visit to the most recent one, the face of Rwanda, without any exaggeration, had com been completely transformed. And I like to say often that if Rwanda made it, anybody can make it. Democracy and development both depend on good politics. And both are interdependent. There is no such a thing as um, development without democracy and democracy in a vacuum without uplifting the lives of people to many of us would have no sense. The problem is that Africa has had dictatorship that did not de deliver development. So what is exactly the argument here? Where you have had a history of authoritarian governance on the continent, which in fact, at the end of the day, neither delivered development nor even any form of participatory uh, 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 governance. Uh, it, it makes that argument effectively to cancel itself out and to raise other questions as to what type of governance delivers development and what needs to be done in order to ensure that whatever form of government is adopted is able to deliver certain dividends uh, to the populace. In Rwanda, politically, we have decided to govern by consensus, to have a level of agreement on what we want for our country. I will talk about two things that have been very important for development in Rwanda. One is women, uh, two is technology. Tremendous impact. I think Rwanda has a burden. Burden a very big burden to keep this vigor, this clarity, and take our message to your party, to your people, that you have not, should not fail us after genocide in a short period of time. Doing this, and then if you squander this, you mentioned zero tolerance or corruption, it should be maintained. We should not hear that there is corruption in Rwanda. All of us are, are very much infested with terrible, terrible corruption. But for the burden that you have, I'm not, I mentioned only corruption, but in other developmental uh, mentalities and doings, you have a big burden, not for the people of Rwanda, but for all of us. The chance. Uh, Madam uh, Minister, I'm really impressed. I have always uh, followed the history of Rwanda. And for me, Rwanda is an excellent example of post-conflict reconstruction, not politically, but also economically. How do these uh, uh, people in the executive and others manage this, uh, uh, the private and public responsibility? Uh. There are so many lessons to learn from Rwanda, as you exactly put. Uh, one, a revival of uh, community practice, age-long community practice, that's poverty alleviation and active and energizing, energetic participation of women. Well, of course, these are the, best, the most formidable qualities that we can learn and other Africans can learn. Mm -hmm.